<clears throat> well, how's it going, guys? My name is Trivigas, and welcome to another episode of Crossout, or not exactly Crossout, but this will be a follow up video to the Is Crossout Dying in 2019 video that I did because I feel like it's relevant to do this video just because of the sheer fact that the video got such an absurd amount of views, and I feel like I Oh, the game and you guys a follow up videos to talk about why I think it is the way it is and how do we fix it. So why do you think Crossout is dying? Well, if you haven't watched the video, I really feel like you should go watch it. And that sort of leads me on to the next question, which is, well, then how do we fix it? Because as I said, there's been almost 400 comments on the video. I think it's my most engaged video ever. And a lot of other guys like Coldfire, Mr. G, uh, Dirk Dirk and Man Who Says Knee all also got behind the a subject and started talking about it a bit and also made videos on it. So there's definitely something to talk about here. No doubt about that. But what exactly do we have to do in order to fix it? I quickly want to say that Beta Angel started a thread on the official game forums where people can post constructive feedback on what they think needs changing right now and how we change it. So if you have any good ideas, do indeed go to the Crossout forums and drop your ideas there and have a talk about it. But do remember to be constructive. That is, after all, the best way to communicate when it comes to changing stuff that we won't change. Right. So. What are my personal opinions about this? Well, first of all, some of the stuff that I hear about the community is the first stuff that I want to talk about. And I tried just boiling down some of the stuff that I heard and, you know, take opinions and see if I could spot any tendencies and then talk about it like that. But first of all, everyone talks about nerfs. It's just nerf, 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 nerf. And at the end, in my opinion, nerfs do not work. And it's really old people talk about. So if we keep on just listening to that and we nerf everything as soon as you see something that you feel is unfair, then you've doomed that game. Then the game is never gonna recover because if you nerf everything that is funny and is good and works, then you're never like you're never gonna allow anyone to have fun. If you on the other hand try to rebalance some of the stuff around the parts that you think are strong. That way you can actually still have that part be funny. Let's just address the elephant in the room, the scorpion. <laughs> because the scorpion is what everyone talks about as being overpowered. And yes, the scorpion is strong, but why not look at something that will welcome counterplace to the scorpion rather than just nerfing it until the scorpion does not work anymore. That's just not the way you fix stuff because all of the players that bought the scorpion will then be pissed because the scorpion does not work anymore. And then they will move on to something new, and then that weapon will be the most played weapon. Some people will face that weapon, some people will say that that weapon sucks, and then at the end, those same people will get that weapon nerfed, and the people who played the weapon will then feel like, oh shit, I just wasted more coins on weapons, what do I do now? Well, at this point, might find something, some game that is actually fun, where the, kill, where the fun is not being killed immediately. That's personal, that, that's my opinion. We should we should try to work around it and also learn from the experiences that we get when we face strong gear. Like, if we face something strong, rather than complaining about it being strong, we should learn from it, we should adapt to it, we should develop new playstyles, we should learn how to counter, especially, uh, like, seeing the amount of people that are actually complaining about the scorpion had me kind of disappointed especially about the amount of people that do youtube and represent this game and can really start movements that that actually was kind of a bummer for me because the scorpion is is honestly qu quite easy to build around when it's come because the main issue that people addressed was deframing and we have what 20 parts that are like two by fours and stuff where you can mount a ton of wheels to and and sort of fix it instead of using the biggest frames available and then you lose like 10 small wheels because you lose a frame well guess what that's not clever building so you can fix that you can work around that, guys don't get me wrong it is like the the penetration is strong so i won't say that it cannot do with a light light nerf but i just don't want to see another weapon just get nerfed into the ground because some people do not like playing against it don't get me wrong um it's it's no hate or anything it's just we should also learn to adapt to the environment rather than always just thinking that this needs to change sometimes you just need to adapt and overcome the next thing a lot of people talk about is seal clubbing and i do agree that relics do not belong 
in a 5-6k environment. These weapons takes forever to get and it's a weapon that do deliver quite a punch no matter what relic it is. So we shouldn't shouldn't just welcome them anywhere they are but we should also just be careful about saying these weapons do not belong anywhere at all. Take a guy at 5k with the tsunami. Yep, he is strong but I'd honestly rather play two judges at 5k than I'd play a tsunami because in my opinion, two judges deliver a bigger punch and you can still take off a tsunami of a guy with just the tsunami at 5k because he's going to be a walking cabin anyways with just a weapon mounted on top. So that's how you adapt and you feel like, oh shit, he has a big cannon. How do I get close to him? Well, maybe I should bring a cloak to my next game. So you start bringing a cloak that way you can cloak up to him. Once you cloaked up to him, he's not that big of a threat because he has a cabin and if you shoot that cabin five times with your shotguns or whatever you brought he's gonna go down before he even realizes that you're there so it's about countering guys it's about countering developing your playstyle in my personal opinion having said that though yes seal clubbing is still an issue with relics and stuff and this does need to be looked into and people make so many good suggestions like you know making a sort of power score cap so when you apply a relic weapon your power score bumps up by a lot and then you can add stuff like in in quotation marks free power score so to say because your power score do not rise until your power score actually is above what the weapon like sort of bumped it up to hope it makes sense otherwise go through the forums there's a lot of good suggestions guys <laughs> And finally, what I see a lot is the workbench rental system, which if you, like I'm no expert at economy or anything, but there's really just one scenario here that will work out. You lighten the taxes of people that will give people more money like between their hands. So everything will just go up in price. And within 14 days, the market has adjusted to the new situation where people will no longer have to pay taxes to rent the workbench. And thereby, the prices will just be an equal amount more expensive. And that way, we've gained nothing. You're just going to have to spend more whenever you buy a weapon. So nothing's changed in the end. And that's just the way it is. The entire economy will just adjust to it and it's just done. That way, no one will, will get richer, no one will get less poor or anyone will get more poor. It just doesn't work like that, guys. So there's no point in removing the work bench rental. The entire market and the economy in the game is so big already that it will adjust within a week of 14 days and then we're back to square zero just without the work bench rental. So what should we do now that i think personally should be changed because the first part here was just some stuff that i heard guys talk about now i want to talk about what i think is actually relevant in this game in order to fix what we have right now and i want to start about the most important thing in my opinion because this game is the most creative game that i have played in a long time and we have an engine and we have a game modes that allows us to do so much funny creative stuff create custom games create custom game modes everything like that but we need the tools to do it we've been, been introduced to the custom games that we can now host even though you're not on a promo account which is a great step in the in the correct direction but give us some creativity in the custom game modes because just I'm going to commit a sin here and just bring up Fortnite because remember back when Fortnite released the creative mode, holy crap, the game blew up once again. Because the developers decided to give players as much creativity and as they humanly can. I'm not saying we need a map builder or anything like that, but I'm saying that we want the custom game modes to have variables like infinite boost, infinite ammo, time limits, team sizes and stuff. Take a look at what Gromek has done. He's hosted races with more than 30 players in one server. And the servers were fine about it. I know devs talk about how they don't think the servers will be able to handle it. But we've seen that they can handle it. Maybe, like, don't give us 32 players, but just allow us to invite something like 20 people into a game. That would be amazing. And, and give us variables. So you can do inf infinite boost or ammo. You can like apply your own build to whoever participates in the custom game mode. You can do something like respawn. You can 
do whatever i don't know just give us the tools to mess around with custom game modes the way that custom game modes are supposed to be messed around with because that is something that will create content for the game that people will like trust me if the develop if, if the developers gave me full creativity in custom game modes i would be hosting you you saw the sumo event that i hosted i would be hosting that kind of stuff all the time because i feel like it is freaking amazing and i have so many good ideas that i want to go ahead and do but simply can't because it's hard to do it with the limitations to the custom game modes that is right now and yes i do know that we then step away from the core idea of the game but again this is about adjusting to the market that you actually appeal to and this people like seeing how you can manipulate with games and how you can create funny game modes and then they want to watch a game even though they don't play it themselves they still want to watch it because it's funny content and that way you get a massive exposure that will then potentially lead to additional customers joining your game spending money on your packs maybe moving on if none of this is fixed eventually <laughs> but you sort of get the memo right and then next up let's have a look at something that i personally think is a freaking great idea i have to because it's my own idea but you know loot crates or etc for doing raids to compensate for the massive grind that is going on right now imagine if we introduce something like loot crates with rare decor or stickers or whatever something it shouldn't give you an, an advantage in any way we're not talking armor parts that will potentially make you stronger than your opponent who hasn't grinded those armor parts but just some nice looking decors or something you know where you can really stun on your enemy something that is truly rare myself personally uh i played a lot of world of warcraft back in the days and i have literally spent hours in dungeons and raids and stuff trying to get my like rare mounts just take back in back in the days in in like uh in in some of the old patches fuck i forgot the name wow I'm so stupid. <laughs> but back in the day, I literally spent hours trying to kill Kale Thas to get my ultra rare white Hawks Rider. And that's something that I would do in this game too. If the devs gave me an, something that I could potentially get by doing a million raids, I would do those million raids. Because if I could get something that my opponents do not have and I could stun on them with a sick decor item, then I would totally do it. Like, I would do it all the time. I would be grinding raids from day till night. No doubt about it, amazing change in my opinion. But let's see what you guys think about it. Then next up we have something like <coughs> that we talked about a lot in the previous video and I, and I still think we should talk about but how the meta functions right now. Because yes, the meta should indeed be here and the meta is defined by whatever is strongest and I fully agree with that. But we also have a layer of weapons right now called relics that are super limited in the different amounts that we have like in the different options that we have right now we have a scorpion a typhoon a porcupine we have a punisher and we have a breaker and i don't think i've forgotten anything and just look at something like the punisher it was literally doomed before it even released because people complained so much about it that the devs had to nerf it to the ground before it even released and look what we have now we have an aspect with a bigger hitbox and then a perk that they say reduce gun turning speed but honestly you you never even get to apply the perk before your guns are gone because the punisher has a stupidly massive hitbox it can be mounted as well as aspects because of the four barrels which is completely stupid and then we have something like the breaker which is also a four barrel shotgun and just a, a horrible shotgun compared to some of the to the hammerfall because of the fact that you cannot build around it because of the massive size and the four barrel so you get a terrible like gun firing angle if you actually mount it like you would mount your hammer falls so guys definitely we should have a meta but at least if if you, if you want that method to be relics give us a full set of relic weapons give us relic plasma guns give us relic uh, like turreted cannons give us relic auto cannons give us relic unguided rockets give us relic guided rockets give us everything relics so we have a full set of relics and people can actually choose different playstyles between that, so you don't have to choose between the five or, realistically, the three different relics that are actually functional. Fuck, I forgot the firebug. <laughs> There's also the firebug. Six relics to choose from, or realistically four, because the punish and breaker, I'd call them out for right now. The next up there's something like the module limitations that I really think needs a fixing. 
they need to stop the radar spam that is going on right now it's actually stupid how can a radar have more hp and durability than a freaking armor piece taken from a tank like look, look at some of the apc parts they actually have the same durability as a stupid thin radar it makes no sense just at least limit it to one radar per vehicle limit it to two i don't care just don't allow people to bring 12 radars onto a hover and have those work better than actual armor parts it's literally just stupid and i'm surprised you guys would even consider fixing decor items and then not fixing radars i'm literally mind blown about that and then also please do go ahead and fix the massive aegis spam that is going on right now my personal opinion would be just one aegis per item because we can't have three four engines and we can't have three four um chameleons either so why can we have three four five aegises i do not understand it if you want to like meet us halfway just limit it to two i'm fine with dual aegis helios they can be countered it's not like it's strong yes it's really really strong but it can be countered easily so please devs look at it fix it do something <laughs> and then finally we have like just a couple more points left and then we're done so I want to talk about the grind. Is it good or bad? In my opinion, yes, stuff should be hard to obtain, and I'm all good about that. But the thing is, again, bringing me back to the relic point, that Clan Wars has gotten to a point where everyone has relics at this point who has played this for some time now. And it makes it super hard for people to even get above 200 score where you can grind uranium. And if it continues like that, new players will never get the relics because they will never get the uranium if they cannot get above 200 power score, or not 200 power score, but 200 uh, clan rating, where you can actually grind uranium. So something has to be done, and I cannot give you the answer of what has to be done here because personally, I feel like some of the grind is good. It's just boring as shit, but it is what it is. There's more important things to to work right now. So what do you guys think? Let me know down below if you have a fix for it. And then we have the massive amounts of pay-to-play weapons, which is also something that I've talked about before, and it just it feels so stupid that we never get listened to. Take the Tagler, for example. They said that we're going to introduce a craftable version of the Tagler to compensate for it. Then they gave us the Protector, and the Protector was craftable for a mere 14 days while the Night Riders event was going, and now you can't craft that either. <laughs> so there's just so many weapons that we cannot obtain unless we're really willing to pay coins for it. Just look at something like the elephant. It's sitting at 3,000 coins right now for an epic cannon. Like, come on, it's freaking hard to get for the average player. And what if he just wants to create a nice looking tank? Yes, there is the fat man, but it is ugly compared to the elephant. Just remove that massive paywall for so many of the weapons. Just make them craftable eventually. I know you want to make your money on it, but just make them craftable after some time. You cannot buy the elephant anyway, so why not just let us craft it? Like, let us get it. I do not understand why we cannot be allowed to craft that stuff. And then finally, I feel like we should have a look at the perk of many weapons. We have a ton of weapons like right now, like the Quasar. Just take that one as, a, as an example. The perk describes how the weapon works. And the perk is also directly applied to the Pulsar, but it's not a perk on the Pulsar. It's just the way the weapon works. Give us, like some of the weapons really need us to rework on their, on their perks also the tagler look at the tagler it's a direct debuff as soon as you as soon as you go into battle and fire at someone you expose your guns and thereby making them much easier to degun the argument is that they help you getting hit by like stray shots and someone sneaking up on you if you're not shooting well guess what you're gonna have to shoot back at him eventually and when you start shooting back at him he's gonna take your guns <laughs> immediately because they're not that strong once you actually start firing so in my opinion, it's still a debuff. And that's pretty much all I have for you in this video, guys. I hope you can use it to something. If you can, do let me know what you think about it. Do let me know what you think about it compared to the first video. And if you have engaged in this discussion of how to fix the game, do let me know what you want to suggest in order to fix some of these things. Okay, guys? Thank you so much for listening to me. Until next time, have an awesome day. Bye.